call it urine. It's not. What we have done at that point is we have created a material, a liquid material, that has a high amount of different molecules in it along with a lot of water. So we make it, th that blood flow makes it to that structure of the glomerulus. And the fluid that forms is now turned filtrate. We now have to move that filtrate through the rest of this tubular structure. So when we look at the structure of the nephron, we're going to find that we have a proximal convoluted tubule. That PCT makes its way to this great big huge loop which is termed the loop of Henle, the nephron loop. That makes its way to a distal convoluted tubule, the DCT. That DCT meets a collecting duct. Several, usually about seven to ten, nephron structures meet one collecting duct. Okay? Is everybody following me on this right now? So let's say I have nephron, 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 nephron. There's only one collecting duct in the midst of them. Because for each of them, their DCT, their distal convoluted tubule, will meet that collecting duct at some point. Yes, no, maybe. Emily? So in the picture at the top where it has like the pyramid, it's showing one of those systems. And that's, it wouldn't be to size right there because no, it's, it's microscopic. Okay, but. Okay, so there's like seven a bunch of those in that one little pyramid. That one kid, let's think, let's use a number that we can understand. Well, let's use a number I can understand because I can do math. <laughs> okay, let's say if that, re if that kidney can have up to ten pyramids, that little pyramid structure, okay? And if a kidney can have a million nephrons, and I've got 10 pyramids. 10 into a million would be 100,000. Is that correct? It would be about 100,000 nephrons per pyramid. So it would be roughly 100,000 of these structures that they're trying to represent per pyramid. Because they're microscopic. And then only seven of those? There, well, there, there, there could be more, but... Yeah. That there would be several of these structures that would meet one collecting duct. And guess where the collecting ducts have to go to? What's the little part right before the calyx? The renal, the, the renal papilla. This portion, and they're trying to show where it's going to kind of be making its way, and then this being the minor calyx, and the yellow is representative of urine. But it wasn't urine until it made it through the collecting duct. Okay, is everybody with me now? Now, here's the interesting part. For the structure that exists, the 
cell structure that is present is going to be why materials will get to move or not. Do you guys remember? Simple cuboidal, simple squamous. Okay, so in looking at that fact, simple tells me how many layers? One. One. So if I have simple squamous, it's going to be one layer of all my little fried eggs, right? If it's simple cuboidal, it's one layer of my cubes. Does everybody remember that? Being the fact that this would be simple, one layer, what this will do, the, these cells and this particular structure are effective for the processes of diffusion and osmosis. So materials can either move between cells or materials can pass through a cell. Because, if you remember, cells have that little basement membrane that exists, and that's always termed my basal area. Anything on this side is termed apical. Did y'all learn that from part one? So, this structure is tubular. I know, I think of fast times at Ridgemont High. I just showed my age, but y'all know my age. Okay? Probably don't know what that movie is. All right? Look it up. It was tubular, man. Okay, so <clears throat> a tubular structure that can either be simple squamous or simple cuboidal, which means the filtrate that got formed in that glomerulus will begin to travel this tubular structure. All right? And in addition to that, do you guys remember that there were blood vessels everywhere? All right? So that tubular structure, this would be the basal side of the cells. The part showing on the other side would be apical, meaning it faces the lumen, the portion that fluid will be moving. What's moving in that fluid? What's in the fluid? Water and molecules. Stuff that either needs to be. If this is my tubular structure, and then this is going to be fluid moving through that tubular structure. In that fluid is going to be that water and a bunch of those molecules. Now I don't mean moles like moles in chemistry. That's just my shorthand for molecules. Okay? Some of that needs to continue moving all the way through this tubular structure through this collecting duct to my calyces and into my ureters, to my bladder, out the urethra, out the body. Because it's wastes. For example, urea. 
but other stuff is present. I have my ions. I might have some sodiums. I might have some potassiums. I might have some calciums. Do I need that to continue through this tubular structure to the collecting duct, blah, 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 to the bladder down the body? Why do I need to keep those ions? Why do I need to keep them? Because they work everything work. I don't need sodium flying out my body. I don't need that potassium flying. I don't need my calcium flying out of it. I need to return it back to the body. What about the water that's in this part going through the kidneys? Do I need all the water that's going to make its way? So, uh-uh, I'd never get out of the bathroom. We'd be flying around on little toilets. Okay? I gotta return that. And then, those little capillaries that were everywhere. Blood flow. Might have some waste that made it there. And they might need to get that waste into this tubular fluid. So guess what's going to be able to happen? Not only am I going to have filtrate going through, where stuff can get put back, stuff can continue forward, the blood vessels that can be present can be like, oh, well, you know what, urea, you need to go. Or whatever toxic waste might be, you need to go. And they can drop it back off at that little tubular area because of the structure. So, I tried to put in here the structure because cuboidal is very rare in the body. This is the one, one of the areas of the body that you will find simple cuboidal cells. So, I'm going to find in my region here, simple cuboidal with microvilli. The ability for this to be taking place because I need for fluid to continue pushing forward. Is everybody with me? Okay. As I make my way into my loop, we, we say that we have the descending loop, the loop of Henley, and my ascending loop. The arrows are showing you the movement of the fluid through the structure. So once we create the filtrate and it goes through the DCT, it will now enter the descending, go through the loop, go ascending, go to, I mean PCT, go DCT, go to CD, and become urine. So now, my descending loop, simple cuboidal. No microvilli, because hopefully, flowing with gravity. All right? Make it to the loop, simple squamous. And I try to point out, very permeable to water. Because I need to make sure water movement is occurring. Okay? Uh, yes, yeah, some water might need to come back in, but a lot of the water that becomes in, that comes through the filtrate, I need to make sure I return it back to the body. My ascending loop, once again, cuboidal. Get to my DCT, get to my CD, once again, cuboidal and cuboidal. All right, because one of the things that cuboidal is good about is allowing for movement of materials, movement of molecules.